So this is Betsy. It's a Matsu Dozer 1972 model, D155. She's 50 years old. Where do I find the grease nipples in this flat-chested machine? You grease those arms, you grease four nipples, two on this side, two oh, yeah, on the other one, side. One more here. Yeah, there's two there. We spent $10,000 getting Betsy ready. We're taking Big Betsy to Death Valley to do an open cup. Just days are left before unworkable 50 degree temperatures and vicious dust storms shut down all mining in Andamooka. I'm definitely feeling the pressure at the moment. We're just working as hard and as fast as possible to be able to find this opal so we can pack up for the summer. The misfits, Angel Dempsey and Juan Vasco are risking everything, relying on Betsy, a 40 ton dozer, to dig an open cut mine and reach their season target. I'm not super confident because it's such an old machine. And it's huge. <laughs> it's the biggest machine I've ever operated. I've had no formal training on how to operate a dozer. Enjoy the ride, man. I'm all self-taught, you know, like jumping in the deep end, really. Bloody hell, made a mess. Oh, I wasn't expecting that to come out. I had the revs up a little bit too high than what I should have, and buddy, the oil just, you know, come through and they splashed everything. The side of the machine's full. So I'll make sure the bungs are tight, and then hopefully, should have gears. All right, I'm going to start it back up again. Get a good crank, man. Big machine situations, angels, the girl. She's ready for work. Yes, unreal. We got the ultimate machine. Like, it's just a monster. That machine rocks. <laughs> When driving Betsy up and down the cut, my focus is to get the walls as straight as possible and the floor as level as I can. Because at the end of the season, it's hot, dry and dusty. I hope Betsy can handle the heat because I don't want to risk blowing this machine up. Crazy. All right, one, watch out for the opal if it comes up. We've got no time to lose. Let's go. As it goes fully, it's like making the dust ten times worse, so I can't actually see. I'm relying on one to guide me and tell me where to stop. If I go too far, the dirt will collapse underneath me. And I'll fall into that other hole and it's quite nerve-wracking.
With just days left to prove themselves to mentor Opal Joe, Angel and Juan need their failing dozer to reach an Opal level eight metres down before extreme summer temperatures end the season. To have what's been set up here, yeah, it's expensive, but if they find Opal, the investment hopefully comes back. And if I don't see the effort, then I'll just pull the support away. Angel and Juan are down at about 15, 16 feet, and they're starting their exposed ground that can be opal bearing. The only thing I'm looking for is that different color that opal brings to the surrounding dirt. Usually when opal's exposed, you'll see a flash of red or blue or purple or green, you know, and you'll be able to spot it. Joe says any moment from now, we could dig up a pocket. So with two sets of eyes on the ground, we'll hopefully find it as Betsy rips it up. Mr. Joe, does this mean something? It's Opal, John. Oh. Angel. Angel, you got to stop. Do you mind coming, Luke? All right, come on, come on. Mr. Joe, I see red. Oh, oh wow. What'd you find? Oh, it's red crystal. No, you must be kidding me. <laughs> this is what we waiting <laughs> for okay. all morning, man. Oh, wow. Is there any more? Have a look at this. Pour water on it. That's a lot, man. All smashed up, but the colours are unreal. It's real opals, real bloody opal. I can't believe after the amount of sweat, the amount of diesel, the amount of dust I've inhaled, and we've found opal like it's just made it all worth it. You could might as well call it payday. It is payday. It is a good day today. It's a good damn day. How close do you reckon you can get there, Angel? Still got a couple more inches. The excavator's right on the edge of this loose dirt. I don't want to accidentally get fall in the hole with you. Yeah, well, I don't want you doing that either. You've got a 25-ton machine in front of me. Our ramp here is getting steeper and steeper, so we're not gaining the reach that we need to get onto this wall. You know, there's no point in working if you can't reach the opal face, because that's where the opal is, so... Normally, we'd bring the bulldozer in to push out this dirt to give us more room, but unfortunately, that's at home getting repairs and service. Yeah, I can't reach that wall, is he? I'm just gonna hop out and have a bit of a look. Yeah, no worries. Oh, that's so damn steep, man. I know. It's like an avalanche. That's teetering right on the edge of actually slipping into this hole with that's you. That's what worries me, and I've got nowhere to go because no, there's no don't. way out of here quick. Yeah, I think we're stuffed here, Angel. Just weeks of the mining season remain, and the misfits Angel Dempsey, new recruit Izzy Glenn, and mentor and financer Opal Joe Kalmar have been forced to down tools, waiting for vital bulldozer repairs. We need somewhere to mine. Yeah. What about my mine? Yeah, that could work. It's accessible. Very shallow, hey? So it should be yep. pretty easy to work. At least that way we're still mining, because, yeah, we can't do it here. Izzy's mine is on the tea tree opal field almost four kilometres from Angel's claim. It's been worked for decades by old timers, but still holds pockets of virgin ground. Joe's got to be a part of this decision on moving claims in the meantime, because he's a money man. So why are we here? Well, I've put it to Angel, you know, basically rather than wait a week and a half for parts for the dozer, why don't we come and work here for the next week or so? All right. Shall we have a look? 
it's stagnant yeah. at the moment, so yeah. we may as well do something with it. Got way more room than lunatic here. Yeah, but that's because here is very little virgin ground. But this has got a good rep for good crystals, though. So is that a thumbs up or a thumbs down? I mean, better off not boxing in the excavator, to be honest, you know. But there is no choice. You're really going to have to prove yourselves here because the pockets are here, but they'll be very, very small. All right, cheers. All right, let's go get this sorted, eh? Hey. Do it. Hey, week and a half only. If you don't find anything, I'm canning it. Yep. All right, you don't want to waste diesel. Oh, that seems a bit soft. That looks awfully loose. Holy shit, that's a tunnel in me. Is that a drive? Oh, that's a good sign. I mean, having this drive here proves that there was opal here. I'd love to at least make an entrance. Yeah, we're digging it out and having a look. I'll jump in and start scooping. There's a couple of levels down here that I'm seeing at the moment. See that boulder under there? Oh, yeah. There's a crack. Yeah, it's a beauty. That'd be worth, you know, digging out. What I have noticed on that boulder is it has fractures in it, and that's where the silica or the water would have been laying for millions of years, which in turn will produce opal. Look at that crack. She's a beauty. <laughs> that's got a thick opal face on it and cut the opal off the rock. So if it's really good crystal opal, we're on a win. So what do you reckon? I'll give it a crack. Give it a crack. Hopefully she splits open nicely. Cool. Moment of truth. Look how nicely that's breaking her hand. Oh, what's your toes? toes? Oh, bugger. No. That could have been something special. Yeah. No opal. Not meant to be. No. This is still mud. What's that, Angel? Ooh. I've never Is seen that? that. That's a good sign. That's a bit of trace, bit of opal. Almost looks like fire opal. Fire opal, named for its flame-like colour, is predominantly found in Mexico, with recent discoveries in Western Australia. But finding a deposit in Andamuca is extremely rare. Depending on quality, it can be worth thousands of dollars per gram. Now, I've seen lots of honey pots. You know, that's what Andamuca's famous for. And yeah, it's brown, it's ugly, it's not that bright. But anything, no matter what the size we're picking up, because worst case is, you know, it's only worth a couple of bucks. Well, a couple of bucks buy your sandwich, eh? So I'm keen to show Joe. He's winning. Oh, I'm not sure. I don't know what it is. Like, it's crystal clear. Yeah. And this is what we found. Yeah. Oh, that's beautiful. I've not seen anything like this, ever. And it's not fire opal from WA, right? Because we're in Andamuka. Well, I think this is actually better. But it's not the strong orange like this. Not this this crystal clear, anyway. Now okay. the excitement's right. kicking in. I'll, I'll send some away, I'll get them cut quickly. And if it actually ends up with colour in it, it'll be worth heaps. I think it's uh, the rarest thing I've ever seen. I think it looks better than diamond, to be honest with you. Well done. Cool. <laughs> The misfits are about to discover the true value of the rare Andamuka fire opal, unearthed from Izzy's claim, after it was cut and faceted by a professional jeweller in town. Hey, look how bright it is, though. Like, do you want me to open that oh, one? Oh, look at that. That is stunning. Oh, oh my God, it's oh. got colour. It's got colour in it? Look like purple. proper opal colour? Yeah. You see that, oh, Izzy? Look at that. It actually does have colour in it. You know, I've seen all different types, never with colour and never that level of clarity. Right, it is the true, like, once in a million find. That's how I see this, eh? It's got greens, it's got blues. I mean, look at the reds on the back from it, you know? Wow. <laughs> That's so damn cool. That what is a absolutely stunning. The misfits have five stones of unique Andamuka fire opal. Brilliant orange, with small flashes of yellow, green and purple. They've been cut and faceted, weighing 0.7 grams. So what are we looking at? Well, look, value-wise, say five grand bottom dollar of this, and say with that there, I'd be around two, 2,000 a carat for them, you know? So that's 8,000, five, that's, you know, 13 grand, eh? Wow. So what a good right. win. Done well. Yeah. The clarity of the stone is 
is absolutely off the scale. It's, it's, it's beautiful. But now that it's faceted, we can actually see the sparkles of colour. Just for now, you know, Indy's claim's proven itself. There's only a few weeks left of the season, so we've got a good claim to go to. It's a backup plan. I have Joe behind me who's watching the hopper because that's at high risk of falling. And then behind Joe is Juan. On the opal fields of Andamooka, the misfits are moving their noodler to new ground. Two and a half tonnes of equipment that can sift through old mine dirt in search of opal. We're a possible angel, stay in the middle of the road. If the thing's going to tip, it'll tip on the left side. Steady as she goes through that drop. We cannot afford this machine to roll over because we're totally relying on this to bring us income. This is that narrow bridge area. The wheels are getting close to the shoulder. Well, I'm not going to need your help here. I'm going to need a set of eyes right here because it's so narrow. <laughs> Gee, that's steep, eh? If this bank here don't give way, you'll make it. Keep going. Go, go, go. Go, 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 go. Just spin the wheels, man. That's good, good. You gotta push it. It's heavy. Go, 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 go. You made it. Hey, yeah, well done. <laughs> I'm just gonna unhitch the hopper. We're just setting up the noodling room. You have to guide me so I get the conveyor belt on top of the chute. So I can't see what I'm doing. Yeah, that's fine. I got this. What are you doing, Juan? Uh, the legs have to be adjusted. Juan always tries his best on everything he does. So it's really hard to get frustrated with him. What are you doing? Testing, balancing. I just follow my heart. You should follow your instructions. I need to reposition the bobcat. Don't you dare let me hit that. Go, 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 go! So sometimes I just gotta, you know, breathe, be calm. Now, swing it! Tell me, buck it up or buck it down? Up, down, what? Speak. Up, 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 up. We're beginners, so we're just trying to find our feet, basically. More than stop. Looks fantastical. It is rolling! We're about to put our first bucket load into the hopper. It'll be interesting to see what we do actually find. Get ready, one. We've got some opal dirt coming in. Bring it on. It's slow and steady. If we move too much dirt too fast, we're going to miss that stone. If we move it slow and really watch it, we'll find every bit of opal there is in this. Yeah, we're currently looking for color here. I use my trusty blade to find it. OK, here we go. One is just coming across. Look, you just pick it up. Just like a chicken, we find some corn in the fields. Uh, the hopper's just jammed up. I'm just going to have to unjam it quickly. It's just stopped the feed. There's a few big rocks on it. Piece. I can see a bit of red here. Red? You got blue, purple. The pain of lady is where the opal has formed in the crack of a rock. And when you break it open, there's an opal face. Painted ladies feature a layer of opal on bedrock so thin it appears to be painted on. 
Some are believed to be rocks trapped inside icebergs that floated across an ancient sea from Antarctica. The Painted Lady is very unique for Andamooka. You can't find it anywhere else in the world. If you get the right one, it can be worth a couple of grand. They're only good as specimens, like you can't turn them into jewelry or anything. I'm over the moon with what we've found. It's so unique. This pattern, like, I haven't found anything like this ever. But you look how pretty that is. Come check this out. What you got there? Got a bucket full of opal. Chuck it on check you. Check it out. Man, your next. <gasps> Sorry. <laughs> it's pretty heavy. But look at that. That's a nice painted lady. Yeah, that'll be worth a few dollars. See what you're Well, that's nice. Stunning. Yeah. Oh, that's got some nice red in it, eh? That, that's going to make a nice stone. How much do you reckon the painted ladies are worth? Mm, probably up to a thousand bucks. So you reckon you could sell that? Everything's sellable. Why don't you give it a go? It's not that hard. She's got to start somewhere. She's 22. It's time to fire up and start selling opal and learn the ropes. I'm up for the challenge. Well done. Good yeah. day. All right. Great. Cool bananas. Well done. The misfits have a parcel of crystal opal, featuring blues and greens with flashes of gold and elusive red. It's in the rough and includes painted lady opal. Angel's hoping it's worth four and a half thousand dollars. I'm just organising the opal for the opal buy that's coming soon. It's going to be tricky. Like, I need to learn how to negotiate, because if you don't know how to negotiate, you're not going to be a successful opal miner. I'm feeling pretty nervous about my first sale. Almost shaking nervous, but I'm, I'm good. She's got to watch out, because a buyer will know that she's not confident, and so she's not going to get as much as what she should have got. Hey, Luke. How you going? I'm Angel. Good, good. Here to look at some opal? Yeah, you got some colour stones for me? Got them all on the table here for you. The reason I wanted Angel to do the sale is because I'm more or less just uh, a background giving tips and investing. Thanks for coming, Luke. I'm excited yeah. to show you what we've found. No worries. Looks nice. Yeah. She's got to learn the ropes. All right, what you got here? There's no good knowing how to find opal if you can't get any money for it. 17 troy ounces here yep. with the two painted ladies that we found. Well, what are you thinking about for these all up? I'm thinking about four and a half of both for the painted ladies and the opal. OK. I don't know where we go, maybe two. Two? Yeah. Yeah, that's a bit low. What about three and a half? I reckon maybe three probably be the best I could do today. Three grand. Yeah, well, then that's a deal, Luke. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. It's well, yours. Sounds good, yeah. Yep. Thanks. No worries. No Thanks worries. For coming. What did I just do wrong? Got your hair broke on? Yep. I just stuffed up. I think I hit the You hit the track. track. I'll just go there and have a look. Shit. The track seems alright, but I'm just hoping she hasn't damaged the tooth at all. Seems alright. Yeah, no, that's okay, it's good. It's just a close call, nothing too bad. Oh, thank God for that. I'm shaking. That's what happens when you're learning. So just continue to work. Are you sure? Because I'm not overly confident at the moment. That really scared me. Yeah, but if you get off now, it's not going to help your confidence at all. So we'll just continue on. Hope we find some opal, then you'll forget about that. No worries. Well, let's keep going then. Let's get back to it. Do you want me to get closer to that wall? Yeah, if you can, but that might be your last scoop, I reckon, because your arm's fully extended almost. Yep. In Andamooka, Angel is teaching rookie miner Izzy how to operate the 25-ton excavator so the mammoth workload can be shared. He's only just able to reach as well. I reckon that'll do it, Izzy, with the excavator. We'll get the bulldozer in. Okie dokie. So I'm just going to get Betsy running, get her down the hole, push all that dirt out. Betsy is a 50-year-old, 320-horsepower bulldozer that Angel will use to clear tons of mined dirt, which will need to be checked for opal. Now, this cut, every time I take Betsy in and out, it's getting steeper and steeper. And the steeper it is, the more scary it is. Angel's a good operator, and I'm sure she'll get Betsy to do what she needs to do. Come on, Betsy. 
Pretty dusty. Oh, I just uncovered some blue. Oh my god, look at it. Jelly, Jelly opal. opal. Wow. <laughs> look how big it is. Done it. Jelly opal, named for its translucent, gelatinous appearance, is valued by cutters for its even spread of colour and the ease in which impurities can be seen and polished away. How much more is in here? Yeah. <laughs> Could be thousands of dollars worth of opal that we can't see. Finding that stone was great, you know, like it's the first opal we've seen in quite a long time. But it's also equally as scary because I know if there's one stone, there's got to be more. I think black lighting it later might be worth doing. I reckon so, definitely. They picked up some big stones, but the stones are a little bit too big to be missing from the face. It doesn't take long to lose $100,000 or $200,000 in opal. So that gives me concerns. Start the old machine up. Hopefully, she won't cause us grief. Oh, yeah. In Andamooka, the misfits are putting all their faith in ultraviolet black lights to find opal at the eight metre deep open cut mine. Everything does look more daunting at night. My heart is in my mouth right now. Watch it, you're coming up to your speed hump here. Yeah, yeah, I can see it in your light. No, slow and steady. First, Angel needs to get the excavator into the open cut to clear mined dirt and expose the opal bearing wall. You're teetering now. Oh, oh, slideys. She's bloody steep. I'm like, almost, I can't even sit on the chair, hey. I'd say you'd be pretty close there, Angel. All right, I'll take my first bite and see what happens. Yep. Just find that wall. Slowly, slowly. Yeah, I'm watching it. Do you guys want to check that wall at all? Yeah, we'll have a look. I like it when Joe looks because I know we're not going to miss anything because he's got the eye for oval. See the glowing there? Oh, there's some in there as well. Yeah, that's it, Angel. That's opal there as well. Yeah, so Joe was just pointing out some trace and I've just picked up a piece there. That's a nice trace, but yeah. that one there. I've just shown the white light on it and it's just popped yet, but this other stuff has got a different turquoisey colour, which means it's got a different body to it, so it's like, that might have colour, that piece, but so far this is just potch. Potch is colourless opal and low in value, but a good indicator of ground with the potential to produce colour. In this situation, it's opal in the walls, so what's really critical is take your time and start digging it out. I've got some kind of opal. Don't know what grade it is yet. I'm just pulling out the seam, picking up all the glowy pieces and chucking them in my pocket. Oh, look at that. Awesome. That's a scene. <laughs> That's bloody cool. awesome, is he? Once you see opal, you can't unsee it. No. <laughs> and this is awesome. This literally could be a $100,000 pocket, $200,000 pocket. Might be a few hours to dig it all out, but it'd be worth it. You know, good for our spirits. We've done well. Good job, mate. <laughs> cool. He's looking busy. He is looking busy. Hurry up. Morning, Joe. Morning. That's Come from last night. I'll show yeah. you last night's efforts. Cool bananas. After an exhausting 4 a.m. finish, the misfits are ready to appraise the opal from their night shift. I chucked it in the tumbler last night, cleaned it all up. So, well, that's pretty. It is. Hey, that's not bad. Not bad for a night shift. Awesome. That's a nice one. Look at the sparkles on that. There's one really good one in there. You'll see it in a minute. Oh, this is crystal. Definitely the uh, kingstone. Crystal of opal. Nice it's definitely the kingstone of this three ounces. Very nice. It's very electric, eh? Holy shit. 
Actually, that's nice as well. The Misfits have jelly and crystal opal with an intense rainbow spread of colour. It's been tumbled and there's 85 grams. So how much do you reckon it's worth? Uh, from what I'm looking at here, yeah, you say 3,000 now, say 9 grand. Yeah? Yeah, awesome. 9 grand. Wow. I mean, that one on its own is 1,500, 2,000. We're slowly getting to our target. Yes, yeah, slowly yeah. but surely. Yeah, no, the bottom dollar will be nine grand on it. It's bloody hard work on you. Not only I'm digging, I'm also moving the dirt myself. It's probably 20 kilos, so I don't overfill it. <laughs> Well, I know it's bloody heavy. <laughs> I'll probably easily have moved, oh, probably, say, 20, 30 tonne of dirt by hand for having this mine. In Andamooka, South Australia, 23-year-old rookie miner Angel Dempsey has resorted to working alone in an opal-rich but dangerous claim. I don't know what that was. The chunk has come down in there, so I already know that's a dangerous section. I'm not going in there. I don't want to get buried alive just yet. You know, it's too early in my opal career, so. At the start of just their second season mining together, the misfits are in disarray. So Juan isn't with me mining this season. He's got a nine to five job. Watch out! My gosh. Oh. <laughs> Colombian rookie miner Juan Vasco has taken on work that provides a regular income. That's not well enough to help me. Angel's mentor and financial backer, 62-year-old Joe Kalmar, has recently had a serious health scare. Normally, I would be more involved, but about four and a half weeks ago, I had what's called a mini stroke, and uh, that sort of sat me on the ass. So I've been sort of on, you know, what's called uh, light duties, you know. We are looking for another partner, you know, to work with Angel. But well, we've got to be really careful who we pick. We're at our claim at Lunatic. It's our only underground claim at the moment. A lot of that ground underneath is already compromised, as in not safe to enter. So areas there that could fall down in six weeks or two months, but it'll definitely fall down. Well, I want to get as much opal out of here, like, quickly, just to help with the fuel bill of doing an open cut. Bring the bulldozer here and rip it all up. Do a cut, basically uh, clean out the whole, whole area, you know? Last season went really well. We smashed our target by five grand, but we worked hard for that. <laughs> if I'm going to establish myself as a miner, I'm going to have to start getting assets, so I need to increase my season target. 160,000, it's like double. Diesel's gone up, cost of living's gone up. You know, we have to find Opal to survive out here. By the time I'm finished for the day, <laughs> I'm struggling to climb up the ladder. This new girl in town, Izzy. Seems like a pretty, you know, hard worker. She's a good lady. She's in the claim next door here, so. She's the only person I think that might help me. I don't know if she's got experience on the ground or not. Um, I know she's working in an open cut, so probably not. Hello there. Hey. How's it going? Good. How are you doing? Yeah, not too bad. I'm in really like in desperate need of a, uh, you know, some help down there because I can't do it all on my own. Just in time, I'm dying for a drink. You been finding much? Uh, not a lot. Huh. I don't know much about her. I've only had a bit of chit chat here and there. I'm working underground here and I'm finding myself needing help. I can't do it all on my own. So I was actually hoping that you might be interested in it, you know, in a share. It's a hard call. 
you know, because I don't yeah. want to be chasing nothing to go and chase nothing. But there is a lot of, like, this ground is pretty rich. Like, I can take you down with black light so you can actually see it in the walls just so you know yourself that there is opal there. It's underground, isn't it? It is underground. <laughs> what do you reckon we have a look? So I'm a bit iffy about going underground. Yeah. Angel needs to convince Izzy of the rich potential of this mine, so she agrees to team up. I really need someone down here to help me. I can't do it on my own. Always look up. You see any crack at all? That's a no-go zone, don't go underneath it. So we're coming into the ballroom now, Izzy. Oh, this is awesome. Yeah, all that's unsafe, so don't go down there. So this is Izzy, that's the thin layer of pot on a rock, um, which is called Painted Lady here at Andamooka. Sell that for, you know, maybe a hundred bucks, which will help. So that's a good sign there could be more opal behind this rock. Angel's ultraviolet light causes the opal's water content to fluoresce, making it easier to detect. However, low-value colourless potch through to rare red opal all fluoresce the same. Well, I'm about to do some more jackhammering under here and give Angel a break on her arms. Angel, come here. What have you got, Izzy? Look. Up there. Oh, I see that. <laughs> Look at that. So cool. Seems to be a bit of, like, purple colour in it. Yeah, I can see the purple in it. Look at the colour in that. Just in a full electric green and red, like, just bam, right in your face. <laughs> oh, wow. Hey, look. Another one. This one's got green in it, eh? Oh, you ripper. Look at that green. We're on a roll. <laughs> Izzy went really well today. I'm quite impressed with the, like how we both worked well together, like we were in sync. Oh, look, it was awesome today. Great to be able to prove myself and actually find a bit of opal. Hey, Joe. Yo. Look what we found. Not a bad parcel there. I think it's like seven ounces. The misfits have seam opal. Showing the full spectrum of colours, it's in the rough and weighs 198 grams. Thanks for the opportunity, oh. Joe. Cheers, Izzy. Nice See to you meet soon. you. You too. Cool bananas. Catch you later. Joe's just accepted me in on probation for three months. What a relief. You know, I was a bit nervous. It means so much to me because it's going to put funds into the account to be able to help the kids everything they need to start off in the gym. I think we can work well together. She's a tough chick. She gets out there, she gets her hands dirty. She's not afraid of hard work. I'm good to go. 